Hey, welcome back everybody. This is gonna be a project video. We haven't had one in quite some time, so we've got a bunch of them we're working on and wanted to go ahead and get this one finished. You've seen this style of purse if you're following us on Instagram. We've posted a few of these. We've made two or three of these. It took me two or three of these to really get the pattern real, really dialed in. And now we've got our pattern pack created. That There's a link down in the description where if you would like to purchase that, there's four different tooling patterns in that pack. So if you wanna make one of these purses and you want to do some tooling on them, there is four different versions of the of floral carving on those. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and build this bag. We call this the kidney bean purse. Um, it's just more of a little handbag. It's got a short strap. We did utilize the tassel closures or the tassel knots like we've done in a video here a while back. We, we did a video showing you how to tie these knots. You don't necessarily have to do those if you wanna change this up to buckles or just sew this into your Ds for the strap and then do some type of magnetic closure or a snap or something else up here. You can certainly modify this bag fairly easily. Um, the one thing about this bag, it is a step up pattern. So if you've done some of our other purses, this one's going to be just a little bit more complicated, but I think it's going to give you a neat little skill set of being able to do this piping or this welting here um, for the seams instead of just doing it, uh, sewing it face to face and then turning it right side out. Um, I think this is a really, a, a really good skill set to have and something neat to try it on because it's not a very big bag. But if you're wanting to get into making more of like duffel bag type things or things like that, you may want the, to have the skill set of being able to do that piping in there. So we're going to show you how to do that in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting all the pieces out for this purse. This purse isn't gonna have near as many pieces as a lot of the ones that you'll see and things like that. It actually goes together fairly easily, even though we're gonna do some new techniques on here that we haven't shown you in the past. But real quick, what we're gonna cut out of some kind of chap leather, you can pick whatever chap leather that you'd like to use. You want something soft and pliable. So the pieces that we're gonna go ahead and cut out of the chap leather are gonna be the gusset piece. This is gonna be a true to size. So if you've got the pattern pack, you wanna cut this the exact same size that we've got it in in the pattern. This isn't going to be a style of gusset where you're going to have to leave one end uh, kind of wild and, and then prep it up like we did say in the rope bag or something else. This pattern will work on this purse um, and you'll see as we go along. You'll also cut out two of these. This will be a front and a back panel um, out of the chap leather and then as far as our veg leather parts or veg tan leather we're going to go ahead and cut out one of the strap here. This is a shorter piece. This is a good spot to use some of your belt drop offs depending on the average size belt you use and how long your little drop off box uh, pieces are that you just kind of save back for dog collars or whatever. This would be a great piece for that. And then we've also got the two pieces which are just like little yolks or little cake pieces. These are the three that we're going to tool. So we're going to go ahead and get all those pieces cut. I'll get some leather up here. We'll cut those out, get our pieces prepped to tool, get that done, then we can start putting this bag together. All right, so what I've got here is just some old chap leather. It's got a little nice pebble grain to it. If you bought any of the wristlet purse pattern packs uh, over Christmas or around the fall, you may have gotten some of this. I've got quite a bit of this stuff left and we're gonna order some more. It makes a really, really nice bag. It's got a good feel to it. Um, and it's not just super, super thin and flimsy. It's more about a four ounce and that's probably what you're gonna wanna use. Four to six ounce, somewhere around in there. It's not that critical. One thing you're gonna wanna do is be sure that you pick out a leather that's got some good softness to it. Something that's not real stiff because we are gonna turn this purse inside out. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our uh, few pieces out of this that we need out of the chap leather and then we'll bring up some veg tan and cut that out.
Okay, so right here I've got the butt end of a side of 910, and uh, this is what I'm gonna use. You could definitely do this piece with like a 5.6, five, 5.7, five, something like that. It doesn't have to be quite that heavy. I just, I'm gonna go ahead and do it just a little bit more because I'm gonna go ahead and tool it pretty well, and I wanna go ahead and just make sure that it's a, a little heavy enough. I might end up uh, taking it down just a little bit after I get everything cut out, but like I said, anywhere between like a five, six ounce all the way up to an eight ounce would be plenty good for the, for these two pieces here. This is gonna be the, the two yolks or the cake pieces. Uh, I'm not sure really what you call them, but that's what we're gonna call them. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. This is Herman Oak Veg Tan, and that's what we're gonna use for those pieces. Anytime I'm cutting out any pattern, I like to just put me a center line on there just so that I have that as reference when I'm laying the pattern out. If I've got to center up some initials or anything like that, I want to go ahead and be sure I can do that without having to measure again. And here, like I said, the strap is just an inch and a half wide, just a belt drop off, uh, belt piece, so you can definitely use a belt blank, whatever you wanna use. I've got one here that's got some blemishes on it here and there, so I'm gonna go ahead and find me a good spot where I can cut this out. Like I said, you can just strip you out an inch and a half strip, and then you can just use the pattern to get your end pieces as far as the shape of that. And you can change the shape of this all you want if you wanted it more pointed or, or whatever. And we're gonna do those tassel hangers on here. So that's, you could definitely switch and do a buckle. If you'd rather do a buckle on here, you could definitely do that. Or you could sew it in if you just wanted it permanently on there, whatever you wanted to do. And since we are doing those sewn on tassels, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mark where my tassel is gonna be sewn at so I don't tool past that, since we are going to tool these. All right, so we cut all our pieces. First, we cut out our chap leather pieces. Like I said, you're gonna have two, a front and a back panel here. And then we went ahead and cut out our gusset, true to the pattern. So just cut that out. I used a half, uh, half round punch here to get these these slots. You can definitely cut those by hand if you don't have a half round punch or something. Uh, just makes that a little bit easier. So we'll set that aside. And then we've got our veg tan pieces. Should have three of those. The uh, strap and the back and our front and back panel. We're gonna go ahead and prep those for tooling. I'm gonna put blue painters tape on them like I usually do. Then we'll head to the tool bench and I'll show you just a little bit of the tooling. We're gonna draw something up here and uh, get this designed, get it tooled, dyed, whatever we're gonna do. And then we'll be ready to start actually putting this purse together. Real quick, I forgot. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to find some type of thin chap leather. You don't want anything super heavy. You can definitely use the same chap leather that you use to cut out those pieces, but I would recommend you using something thinner. Here I've got just an assortment of English bridal leather that I got from Aaron at Maker's Leather Supply. I might use some of this, or I can also use this thinner chap leather here. This stuff came in and it's closer to about a four ounce than it was uh, closer to six ounce. So it's a little bit light and it'll be really good for making the welt. We're gonna go ahead and do a pipe seam on this. So we need to make a welting material or a piping that we can put in there when we sew the bag together. And that way when we flip it out, it's got a really nice piece. A pipe seam is what we're gonna be doing and that's gonna look like this. You may have seen that on our reel on Instagram and if you haven't, you can go back to our Instagram page and pull that reel up. I show how I do this seam here real, real easy. We're gonna go ahead and do that in this video and I'm gonna go in a little more in depth on what we're doing than I did, was in that video. But in order to put that piping, you can change the color. You can use a different color here or whatever, just kind of accent the bag. It looks really cool. It's a little more professional way of doing the seam than just sewing it face to face and turning it inside out. Gives you a, a nice, uh, I think a cleaner look, but you're gonna wanna pick out some type of chap leather that one will glue very easily and that's not too thick and not too stiff because you're gonna be making some turns with that and doing that sort of thing. So pick something out that you like that kind of complements what you're doing here on the bag and then just cut you a bunch. You want it pretty, they're 
fairly long, like I would probably cut them however long the side is, and go ahead and cut those about an inch to an inch and a quarter wide, and then we're gonna glue those up and just fold them in half. And I'll show you whenever we get to that point, but just find you something you can cut some one inch strips off of that are at least say, you're probably gonna need six, seven foot, something like that, maybe five foot. We just basically need it to go around this edge of the bag. So however long you need, I always just cut a couple strips more than I need in case I mess up or something. But find you something you like, cut you some one inch strips, hang, off, hang those off to the side, and we'll get to those in just a few minutes. All right, so we've got our panels tooled. All I did on these is I just did a uh, medium oil antique on these. So I just sold them with olive oil and then antique them. We have a video showing how we do that. And now we're just gonna go ahead and get everything edged and slicked. We don't worry about the purse strap yet. We're just gonna slick these two panels, the front and the back panel. And, um, and then on the purse strap, what we wanna do is go ahead and just take down a little bit right there at the ends where it's gonna fold. That's gonna fold back on itself and we're gonna do those tassel buttons. So we wanna thin this leather down just a little bit. This leather weight is 910. And so that's gonna be just a little heavy after we line it because we are gonna line the purse strap. So just gonna take that down maybe half the thickness. And now here what we've gotta do is we've gotta come in and punch a hole here. If you decide to use a buckle and a strap or something different to close this purse, don't put this hole in there. Um, I'm cutting this because I'm going to have that tassel button like we showed um, how we made the purse the way it closes with that tassel button. So I'm going to go ahead and put that hole in there. It's kind of an oblong hole. So I'm using a, uh, a half kind of a half half round punch there. It's uh, really a strap in cutter and we're just making our, our hole there and then we'll go ahead and edge and slick that as well. So now after we slick all the edges on these two panels, we'll just set them aside and let those edges dry real good so that we can put dye on them. Um, you want to be sure that they're dry before you go ahead and dye those edges. Now we'll take our gusset. We're going to take our gusset and our two main body panels, and we're going to go ahead and skive a little bit around the edge. If you have a bell knife skiver, this is a great way to do this. I do not, and most of y'all probably don't have a bell knife skiver, so we're going to go ahead and do these by hand with just a safety skiver. What you want to do is be sure that you have a nice sharp blade in there and you just want to take about half the distance or half the thickness off. Maybe not even that much. You just want to take a little bit because the way I'm going to make this purse is we are going to welt this. So I want that welt to lay in there nice and flat. I want everything to bend real nicely and make a nice real clean seam. And so I'm going to go ahead and thin this down just a little bit. I'm only thinning it where the actual body is going to attach. So you saw me mark it right there at the beginning. Um, and that's just going to make it lay nice. If you're not going to put a welt in this bag or a piping, when you do this bag you can certainly just sew panel to gusset inside out and then flip it and it works just fine the very first purse I made I did that way and it works great if you're going to do that you don't necessarily have to do this step here you sure can it does make it turn a little bit easier and it will make that seam look a little cleaner but just don't go too thin because you're not putting any more material in there with a piping or a welt so you want to be sure you have enough material there that the stitches will hold really well and that you won't see any of the stitches when you turn it inside out so we'll do this to all the panels um, or all the pieces here for the main body of the bag and then we should be ready to start um, put those tooled pieces on the front and back body piece as well.
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put our D-rings in our gusset. This is a good time to do that. And the way the pattern is, it just folds over and you line up the top two edges right here on this corner. This front part that folds back, I kind of like fold it to the outside. I think the rough out looks nice to accent that gusset. You can surely change this up and just make it a little wider and just fold it to the inside if you'd prefer. Um, but the way I have it set up, you fold it to the outside, line these up. You may have to trim a little bit of this front these little front wings right here you may have to trim that off to match the gusset but we're going to fold that over with this d in there so we'll go ahead and stick this in there right quick and make that fit and the d's that i'm using are an inch and a half wide so that's an inch and a half d and these are just some little designer d's that i got from ohio travel bag they're really neat they got a bunch of different styles and stuff you can pick some out use any d that you'd prefer and then we're going to go ahead and line that up and I'm going to go ahead and mark it, and then we'll glue it together, and then we'll sew it. Um, sew that in. You just want to kind of make sure that you're, you're centered on the gusset best you can. And then we'll mark where that's going to be. And then we'll go ahead and take that D back out. And then we'll do the same to the other side. And just line them up a little bit there. Make sure it's centered. Now we can go ahead and put glue. My glue's kind of getting thick. If you have a glue pot where your glue is getting a little bit thick, you can always add a little bit of uh, acetone in there. And, um, and that'll thin it out. If you're using barges, I think they do make their own brand of thinner. Um, I've always used acetone, it works fine. But I don't use barge, I just use the contact cement from the hardware store. But you can always thin that down with some acetone. You don't have to throw that glue out. And we don't need a ton of glue right here. Mainly what I'm gonna, what I'm trying to do is just get enough glue on there where it'll hold it so we can sew it. Cause we're just gonna sew these D's in. And so I'll let that glue set up and then we'll come back and, and uh, glue that together and then sew it up. All right, so that glue's nice and tacky. Anytime you're gluing stuff, I've mentioned this before, but mention it again, I've been getting a few questions on gluing stuff up. But anytime you're gluing something up, just be sure that your glue is tacky. Some of this oil tan leather, it may take a little longer for the glue to uh, really set up or, or kick. So just kind of make sure it's tacky and not wet. Doesn't need to be wet. Um, we'll go ahead and glue that together. We'll so like give it a little, little tap there that just makes a good contact on there so that it's sure to stick, stick down good. I've got both my D's in there on this gusset. This gusset, when you when you do this purse, you do not have to size or dry fit the gusset before you put your D's on. Um, just cut it out like the pattern. If you do have the pattern, you can just cut it out because the gusset, you're just gonna center the bodies. You'll see as we go along, but you're gonna center those up into the gusset. The, the gusset doesn't have to fit um, top edge to top edge like a lot of our purses or bags or things that we've done. So this makes it a lot easier to put together. But we'll do that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew around here, but then I'm also gonna sew right up the sides here. So we'll come up the side right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a little, kind of like what I call a toe bug, like you would see on the, on the toe of a pair of cowboy boots. You'll see that decorative stitching. I'm gonna do something real similar here just to give it a little bit of decoration. You can certainly draw this up, make a jig for it, so as you can do this uh, re repeatedly and not have to freehand it every time. But I'm just gonna draw this on here where it looks even. And you don't have to do this. You can sew straight across. 
when I'm sewing stuff up, it's just kind of habit. Um, being the saddle maker, you don't usually sew across any point of tension. So any point that's going to actually have weight pulled against it, you don't. You want to try not to sew directly across because that's perforating your strength point. This is a purse. It's not going to be that big a deal, but I'm still just out of habit. I'd rather do this type deal just to secure this where I don't have any stitches that go straight across. So I'm going to do that that little football shape kind of thing right there. Uh, plus, I think it looks better than sewing straight across. But you can definitely do it however you prefer. So now we'll take that over to the sewing machine and we'll get those sewed in right quick. So we got both of these sewn, and as you can see, we, like I said, we just did that little that little decorative stitch right there. It's gonna keep them in there nice and secure. And so now the gusset will trim these stitches and we'll set this aside, and we'll go ahead and put dye on our panel pieces that we tooled, and then we'll be ready to get the front and back panel body of the purse ready to go, and we can start getting our piping together and put this purse together. So now we'll go ahead and dye the edges on our, our tooled panels. I've already dyed the uh, inside edge here of this circle. I did that with a actually a Q-tip. It's a little tight trying to get the dauber in there. And so we'll use this dye pen here. And we'll get these all dyed up and then they'll be ready to sew onto our body pieces. Okay, so we've got our edges dyed and the dye is dry now. So these are ready to be put onto our body panels, the main body panels of the purse. On the front panel, you'll see marks here where these pieces go. So that's where this one will line up as well as where this one will line up. These are basically exactly the same bottom profile. It's just this one has the flat part, the longer part. So they'll both line up exactly the same on the pattern. So when you get your pattern pack, if you've gotten our pack there, you can make you a poster board piece like that. And I just take a scratch all and make dots through there or holes through there with a scratch all. And that way, what we're gonna do now is line that up on our body panel, our main body piece of the purse, and just get it lined up best you can. And then I just go through there and just put dots all the way around and that's going to tell me where I need to put my glue so that I can line up these tooled panels on here. And if you can't see those very well, you can come in here and just kind of sketch in a little little bit of a line to follow. But like I said, all that's for is a lineup so we know where to set this piece. Okay. Other thing on the patterns is you'll notice the um, this front piece here on the pattern, there's two bag punches. Uh, those are half inch bag punches. That's because on my design of this purse, again, I use those tassel buttons. So that's where that one will tie in through the purse. I don't punch them until it's glued and sewn onto this piece. Then we'll punch through both layers of leather at one time. It makes a lot cleaner hole. So don't worry about that then. Um, if you're going to do a different type of closure system, maybe a magnet or a snap or something different, 
then you don't need these holes at all. So I wanna mention that now, don't, don't punch these holes right at first when you cut all these pieces out. Same with that hole there. You may wanna use a different type of closure than those tassel buttons. So I try to leave all my patterns open where you can kind of change them up if you want to. It's gonna be the same thing on the strap. If you don't wanna do the tassel buttons for the strap, you may wanna do a little buckle. You may wanna just change this up some here so you can fold it around and sew it onto the Ds and then just sew your Ds into your gusset at the end or something. Um, or sew this onto your D's on your gusset at the end, that's fine. Um, however you want to do it. I'm just trying to give people a lot of options with these patterns where if y'all want to change them up, you can change them up pretty easily. So, then we got that one marked where it's gonna go, so I'll mark this one here now. And you can use a pencil for this too. You don't necessarily have to use a scratch all. These little lineup holes, doing things like this. I do this on almost all of my patterns um, for different fold marks and, and mark placement marks and stuff like that. The man I learned from, that's what he, that's how he kind of patterned everything. He was very good at patterning different items and he always had some type of marking system so that you don't have to try to refigure center or depth on anything. You can just kind of get it on there and, and uh, mark it. So now we use the glue um, if you want. Again, oil tan, you can sure take a little piece of sandpaper and scratch this up. Just anything will work. Just something to kind of break that grain surface just a little bit so that the glue will hold a little easier. Again, it's not a security thing. We just need it to hold long enough so we can sew it. And if you're using a really oily kind of leather for your main body of your bag, you may have a harder time getting that glue to stick. And in those situations, I might suggest using maybe some double-sided tape or even tacks in the stitch groove just to hold it in place because sometimes it can be a, be a booger on those real oily leathers. We're gonna go ahead and put some glue. I'm only gonna do one coat on these because again, it's just, it's just gonna hold it while we can sew it. And so as long as it feels nice and secure and it's not gonna slide around on me and stuff when I'm sewing, then I'm fine with one coat. The majority of stuff that we do, we're gonna use two coats. So real quick, I wanna talk about the patterns. If you buy the pattern pack from us, you'll notice on this, this piece here with the flap for the closure of the purse, you'll notice that I have a line here, just like I do on my pattern. That's a stitch line. That's to stitch down the body piece on the back side of this because it's gonna fold over that. Some of the patterns, or one of the patterns, I think I did one of them, it's gonna be just like this where it's fully tooled. In that case, you don't need to sew that line across there, obviously, because we've tooled this. So on this bag, we're not gonna do that. Um, and I'm not sure that you need to do it on any of them. The first one I did, I didn't sew across there. And so I don't think it's that crucial that you do that. And um, cause you're just gonna have the body panel behind here and it's just gonna be that short distance. We're gonna glue it down. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. So if you don't wanna sew across there and chance coming off the body, where the body lays in the back here, as you'll see in a minute, then you don't have to worry about it. But I just wanted to make a mention of that. Some of them do have a space, the, the tooling is uh, separated so that you can sew that line right there and secure the back side of the body. But I'm not sure that it's that important, so you don't have to even worry about it if you don't want to. So when I glue this side up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to line up best I can my pattern right here, just so I know about where the top edge of that bag is gonna be. so I don't get my glue over where that is. So I'm gonna put a mark, just a little faint line right there, because that's where this body's gonna stop. It's gonna go you know, up there like that. So I don't wanna get glue on this, because this part you'll see on the bag. And so I just, all we need is enough glue to hold it in place. So I'm just gonna do that. Stay off my line a little bit. All right, so we'll let that glue set up and then we should be ready to stick everything together. Okay, so our glue is nice and tacky. So we'll go ahead and just set these where they go. Wanna make sure on this one that your top edge is nice and flush with your 
tooled piece there. So we got that on there. We'll get this one. I like to kind of look at it and make sure these look even and this looks you no know, space there and there. It should be, if you base it off the pattern, it should be fine, but just kind of check it out when you set it down there. So see, that's what I was talking about there. You're not gonna sew this on a fully tooled one. If you're gonna do it tooled up the whole way, you're not gonna be able to sew this down, which I don't think is that critical because that's gonna fold over the purse anyway. It's glued down. I don't think you'll have any pr trouble with it. So we'll go ahead and, um, groove this one first for stitching. I'm just gonna make a mark a, a little off of where the top edge of the body is. I'm gonna come down just a little bit on each side and that's where I'm gonna start my stitch groove. That's just to ensure that I don't come off the back of the material. And so we'll just take our stitch groover, set it to the distance we want, and we'll groove this for sewing. And this is a horseshoe brand stitch groover. A lot of people have been asking. I've said it in other videos, but just if you've missed it, that's it's a Jeremiah Watt tool, a horseshoe brand tool. I've had it for years. Works really good. I think Weaver sells them. You can probably get on his website and and, uh, and get one from him. All right, so those two are ready to go. So we'll go ahead and take those over to the sewing machine, sew those down. Once this one's sewn down, I'll go ahead and punch my bag punches there uh, for my tassel button. And I'm just sewing this project up with 207 thread. I've got a number 23 needle in here, a size 23. And, um, and this machine is a Cobra Class 4, so from Leather Machine Co. I've been getting a, quite a few questions on some of that here lately, so, but. You can run that 207 with a size 23 and it works, to me it works really good. It's what I sew my belts with. And I just tighten the stitch length up to where they're fairly close. And I think it makes a really pretty stitch and does a really good job. So that's what we're sewing this bag up with. So we have our tooled panel sewn onto the bag body. And so now we're ready to go. You can certainly edge this. I've already edged this piece and uh, I don't really do anything with the top. You don't see much of the top edge right there, but you can certainly do something there if you want to, a little die work or something. As far as the strap, I went ahead and cut out of the same material that I cut the uh, piping out of, which I, is I have that right here, just one inch strips. Again, like we said earlier, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's a, a good leather that you can glue really well, also that it's a leather that's fairly thin. You don't want it super thick, because we're gonna glue this together, fold it in half, and make a welt out of that, or a piping that we're gonna use around the seams of this purse. So you're gonna want something fairly thin. I don't think it can be too thin, other than you know if you get down to like uh, maybe like a one ounce, that might be a little thin. Something around 
around a two to three ounce is gonna be ideal, so try to stay around there. I wouldn't go with really like a one ounce or anything like that. But we've got our piping material here. I cut the liner for the uh, purse strap out of the same material. You can make a decision on that on whatever you wanna line it with. I did that just because we're gonna have this darker chocolate color in the piping, and so I figured that would be a good accent to have the strap lined with that same color. Just kinda of change that up. So what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and just put glue on these strips here, as well as my belt while I'm doing that. You can do all, all four of those pieces at one time, and we'll glue those up, let that glue dry, glue everything together, and uh, then we can go ahead and sew the strap as well as start putting the pipe in on this purse and show you how I'm going to do that. Again, if you don't want to mess with any of the piping or adding adding a, a welt in here, a piping into this bag, you can certainly just take your gusset and you know glue it on or tack it on, however you're going to mount it, um, onto this, sew it all up without any piping in there, and then flip the bag inside out and leave it that way without any kind of seaming or piping in there. That's absolutely fine too. But in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the piping so you'll know how to do it um, or how I do it, and then you can kind of go from there. But we'll get all these pieces glued up and then we'll move ahead. So I've got my glue here. I'm just gonna put some on there and get everything glued together. All right, so our glue is set up enough, so now we'll go ahead and just glue these together. Make sure we get good contact there. I'm gonna get a stitch groover and I'll groove this and then we'll sew it on the machine and then we can edge and slick and do all that. But we'll do that here in a minute because right now I wanna get these these um, this piping ready. So again, this is a one inch strip of that lighter weight type chap leather. Use any color, anything you want. It's a good way to accent a bag is using a different color than the main body of the bag to, to put a little piping in there. And then you're just gonna take that one inch strip after you put glue on it and just fold it in half and press it together. Okay, all the way down. Keep it even. Don't let it get all wonky on you. Just let it get even. Uh, or stay even and you're gonna make just a nice rolled piece there and we'll get this all glued together and then I'll get a hammer and we'll kind of just tap everything down and make sure it's glued really well and then our piping will be made. That's really all it takes to make this. Um, there's some differences that you can do, some things you can do, especially with a bell skyver, you can sky the edges, the outer edges of this all the way along, and that'll make it a little bit more rolled here on the top. Um, I'm trying to keep it simple just for this bag because it's um, this bag is just a little bit of a step up from the bags that we've made so far on this channel, and so I don't want to get too complicated, and I uh, don't want you to have to do a whole lot of hand skiving with a safety beveler, so we're just going to keep it pretty simple. That's why I'm having to use something fairly thin, but if you use something thicker, you can definitely sky the outer edge along here and that'll make that piping have a little bit more of a rolled look. Some people will also use a really thin uh, piece of material and then put a cord inside there and roll that around a cord and that'll make it really rounded too. There's a lot of ways you can kind of expand on these ideas. I'm just trying to give you the basics on this and then kind of go from there. I'm not an expert bag maker, so I'm just kind of going off of what I think would be Easy enough for you to give it a whirl and make one of these bags and not without too much trouble and without having to have too much machinery or you know added knowledge or techniques here. Um, this is a really good way. This is also how I do my welts and swell cover on a saddle. So if we're doing a welted swell cover, we'll do those the, exact, the same way. I'll take some material, make one of these, and this is what we'll sew in instead of just a, a, uh, just a real thick leather welt type style. We'll do that. Let me grab a mallet. So now I'll just grab my hammer and I just want to tap it down the length of the, of the piece. Just going to make sure that it's glued down well, make sure that everything is stuck together really good and that it's even. And so that's our our welt there that's ready to go and so what we'll do is we'll end up putting this on the bag all around the edge on the face of the bag 
and sewing this in and then I'll, I'll show you when we go to put that in how that how that goes and that way when we turn the bag inside out we'll have that nice finished seam there you won't see any edges so I'll get this other one glued up and then we'll move forward okay so we're gonna put this piping in on this piece what I like to do is I like to use these little tacks I've got a bunch of these tiny little they're called clenching nails. Any kind of really, really small nail would work. You want them to be able to pop out of there pretty easy as far as tearing, tearing them out as you're sewing because I'm gonna put a few in as I go along and then as I sew, I'll pull them out as I get up to them. You may have seen that in another video that we did, uh, we've done. But when you line this up, you wanna line up the, you want the rolled piece, the nice pretty piece to face towards the middle of the purse and the, the edge to face the edge of the outer edge of the body. And so you're just gonna line those up line them up nice and true and then put a tack in there kind of back about halfway down halfway through because we're going to sew we're going to sew this on a machine first and what we're going to do is sew this as close to the edge or the rolled edge of this piping as possible so you just want to make sure that wherever you put that tack that that hole doesn't show at the end at the end of the project so, but this, I find this is a lot easier. You can certainly glue this together if you'd rather try to do glue. My deal is I end up seeing the glue in the finished product when you turn the bag inside out. Every time I try it, I end up seeing some glue down in there where that welt is. So I don't want to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and just use these tacks. It takes, I think it's faster. You know, it takes a little time to set them in, but then it keeps everything where it's supposed to be as we're putting it, as we're sewing it. So I don't have to worry about anything shifting around. And you don't have to drive them all the way in. Um, you can also use uh, binder clips. If you want to use binder clips, that's fine. I see a lot of people using those. I don't have a whole lot of good luck with those all the time. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So I got lots of these little nails, so that's what I tend to use if in lieu of glue. And then, so as you can see here, we've got this excess. We'll just cut that off flush with the top of the bag body. And we've got that one nailed in place. So you'll do the same with your other panel. Do the same thing with the other, the other piece of piping that we made, and then we'll be ready to sew those. We'll go ahead and sew this one. I'll show you how, what the next step is. We'll sew this one real quick. Okay, so if you're gonna sew, this piping, this is how I figured out the best way to do it or easiest way to do it for me. If you've got a cylinder arm machine with some type of guide, this is gonna work really, really good. If, you, if you're hand sewing these bags, you can feel where this welt is, so you can be sure to stitch, because when you're stitching these welts, you're gonna to wanna to sew as close to that edge right there as possible there without going, having the stitches pop out into here. Cause this is what's gonna show when the bag is done. Cause we're gonna flip it inside out or right side out. So you wanna get really close right here. If you sew too far back on the welt, this welt's gonna stick out of the bag. So you wanna sew pretty close. So if you're hand sewing that, just keep that in mind, get everything prepped up. You can go ahead and put your gusset on top of this welt. Don't nail this in, just glue it all together or hand sew it and hold it all together. Um, it's going to be pretty difficult hand sewing, I think, but at least then you're doing it one stitch at a time with an awl. And so you can feel where this welt is right here and you can be sure that your stitches are where you want them. If you're sewing this on a machine, what we want to do is go ahead and first on the Cobra Class 4, I can only reference that for, for sake of this video. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put the right toe presser foot on or the one that's where the presser foot is only on the inside of the uh, of the walking foot in the middle. So I usually sew with the outside one on or the left toe presser foot. Um, this time I'm gonna switch to the inside because I wanna be able to get that needle close to this edge of the piping. I'm also gonna have my guide on here. So once I get the first couple of stitches set where I want them, then I'll set the guide and then we'll sew all the way around. Then don't move that guide to sew the other back panel, as well as when we go to put the bag together, as long as you haven't moved that guide, because when you put the gusset on here to sew it, 
Um, we're gonna over stitch. We're gonna stitch this right now. Then we're gonna put the gusset on, nail it in place, um, and then we're gonna over stitch again. So there's basically two rows of two lines of stitches on, right on top of each other. Um, but that's gonna ensure that the welt doesn't move. It's secured first, and then when we sew, as long as you don't move this guide, you should be sewing basically in the exact same spot as you were before. Because when the gusset's on here, you won't be able to see this welt. So that's usually the biggest hassle is trying to figure out where you are. And if you're not paying attention, you can get some stitches on the inside here. So with a guide, it helps you quite a bit to hold everything in place and to be sure that you're sewing where you need to be sewing at. So I'm gonna start a stitch right there and I'm gonna take one, one or two stitches here, be sure I'm where I wanna be. And then I'm gonna adjust my guide and I'm gonna push it right up to my work. And right now it's gonna be real easy because I can see everything. So we wanna make any fine tune adjustments to the guide that we need to in order to sew it where we want it. So if I need to move over a little bit, I'll adjust my guide. If I need to move out, I can adjust my guide. But by the time I get this one sewn in, I should have it set exactly where I need it. And then we can just use that when we sew the gusset in. And as I'm sewing along, I'm just gonna pull these tacks. You definitely don't wanna hit those with the machine. So as you can see there, that welt sewn in. I'm fairly close. You maybe could get a little bit closer, but if you were to cord this welting or skive it like we were talking about earlier, you probably wouldn't be able to get much closer than that because this would be rolled even more than it is now. And so that's about a good distance from the edge. And if I measure that, just to give you a reference on what I've done here, um, about 3 16 of an inch from the inside of that roll. So from here to the stitch line is about 3 16 of an inch. So there to a quarter inch is probably plenty. You just don't wanna go so far out that this, this welt ends up, ends up sticking out of the seam of the bag. But that's sewn in place. And so now this is set. So we're gonna make sure that that stays locked down. You can move this out of the way as we start the next one. I'm gonna sew the back panel too. Get that one sewn exactly like this one so that it's done. But then when we put the gusset in, all we gotta do is pop that guide back in place. And then, cause we're not gonna be able to see this anymore when the gusset's in there. So we'll just pop this back in place and we'll trust that guide that as we go around, we're stitching right on top of these other stitches that we just made here. And that's gonna ensure that none of our stitches pop out in, inside of the welt. And um, that's, a, that's the best way I found to do it that, that uh, keeps everything right so that you have a nice clean seam and uh, goes together pretty quick. So we'll get the other one sewn real quick and then we'll start working on putting our gusset in. Okay, so we've got our welt sewn in on both our front and back panels here. And so now we'll go ahead and sew our gusset in, begin to assemble this bag. We're gonna do it inside out and then we'll flip it at the end. What you wanna do is take your gusset, like I said, we didn't, this is already cut to size, so just cut it the exact size it is in the pattern. And then we'll go ahead and fold it in half, find center, I've already done that. You wanna make a mark on the inside of the leather where your center mark is on each side of the gusset. And then you wanna take your pattern and go ahead and put that on there and find center of the front panel, mark it on that welt right there. And then what we'll do is we'll set those marks together and we'll nail this gusset in from this side and around, and then we'll nail it in from this side and around, okay? And we'll get that s nailed in. Then we'll sew this again using our guide on our machine. We'll sew this side in and then we'll take that whole unit and we'll do the same 
to the front panel. We'll nail it in, we'll sew it up, and the bag will be ready to trim and get prepared to turn right side out. So we'll go ahead and get this nailed in right quick. So I've got my center mark on the front panel. I've got my center mark on my gusset. And we'll go ahead and put one right in the center. Just stay on the inside of your stitches. You don't want to show a hole in the uh, in the finished purse. And you want to keep the outer edge of this really flush all the way around because we're going to be using that guide. So you want it to be all nice and even so it can follow along real easy. And you may have to use a few more nails whenever you're making turns. If you're ever, if you're ever using these little clenching nails for doing a gusset during a turn or something, you might want to use. You might need to use a few more nails and make the make that transition a little quick or a little a little easier there. So you might have to get them spaced a little closer together. I try to use just as many nails as I need and I don't use any more than I really need, but you gotta use enough that you can make it, make that turn nicely. And so it should, come out to where where those wings were for this side where we sewed this over that bottom spot right there ought to end right where the gusset or the uh, body comes up so it, that's kind of how I have it laid out and um, as long as you're not pulling the leather too much it should because some leathers are gonna be stretchier than others and so you might get more pull out of it than the leather I'm using, but in general, they should be fairly close to that top edge of the body. So if using a real stretchy leather, you might stretch, you know, pull it too tight and gain some distance there and you might not, might not get them to meet up quite as nicely. But you can always take the nails out and reset everything and just not not stretch it as much whenever you're uh, pulling this gusset around. So if you look at both of those, they both ended up just right. So like I said, just kind of be mindful for that. But so that's all nailed up. That gusset's ready to sew in. We're gonna go to our machine, use our guide. We're gonna sew again, and that'll get that one side on there just right. Okay, so we've got our guide in place. Go ahead and I'm gonna pluck this first nail right here. I'm not gonna be able to get a stitch in there. And that first one might have to hold with our hand our fingers just to get it started. I want to check and make sure I'm not jumping out of my welt. As you're sewing along, you want to be sure you're pushing up against your guide and following that so you don't get too far out. If you sew too far outside of your original stitches, those will show up in your seam. But you can see what I'm talking about right here. You can't see that welt. 
So that's why we sew it in first, set the depth with the guide, and then trust that guide as we sew along. I say trust it, but check it too. So every once in a while, you can peek inside there and make sure you don't have any stitches that are coming out. Just in case your guide has moved or something's changed, and kind of take your time. If you're at this point, you put a lot of work in the bag, so you don't want to mess it up here, which I have done and it can happen, so. Also, check, make sure you don't have any stitches coming out in front of your welt. And I'll flip this around real quick, just kind of show you what it looks like. So as you can see right there, as we start to flip this around when we turn the bag. You'll see that piping in there. So that's what we're kind of after. Now we'll do some trimming and stuff to really turn this bag inside out. We've got to get the other side sewed on first. So now we'll get the other side prepped up and bring it over here. We'll sew it in as well. And then we'll be able to, because what we're going to do is trim off a lot of this excess here and sand that and get it a little closer to those stitches. And then we'll flip the bag inside and out. Okay, so now I've got the front panel nailed to the gusset, just like we did the back panel. Biggest thing there is when you put those two together, when you nail the front panel on and you've already sewn in the gusset to the back panel, you just wanna kinda of look at it even though it's inside out and just make sure it looks straight and square. As long as it looks straight and square, you should be fine. But we've got it nailed in, like I said, just the same, exact same way, nice and flush along the edge. That's gonna ride against our, our guide there. And we're gonna sew this in just like we did the back, or the, yeah, the back panel. And so we'll just kinda of get started here and get this sewn up. And then the bag will be assembled minus the clean up here of the edge. I'm gonna stay nice and tight up against your guide there. Get a few stitches in and then you wanna peek in there and make sure sewing where you want it to sew now that you've got the bag together so you're not going to be able to peek really easily in there to see your seam on everything uh, or, or all the way around the bag because it's actually you've got a front and back panel on now so as you're sewing uh, as you sew the front piece that's whenever you you're able to see that welt a little bit easier so as long as it sewed it good and you haven't moved your guide you should be able to trust it even more um, on this round here and so you just Go ahead and sew along, and if you feel something really funky or weird as you're sewing, you can always stop and uh, peek down inside the bag and make sure that you're not coming out of your out of your seam there, out of your welt. Biggest thing on these is just take your time. Don't get in a hurry.
All right, I don't see any any stitches down in there that are out of where they need to be. So now that bag is sewn completely inside out, ready to go. We'll go ahead and get this trimmed, sanded, and we'll be ready to flip it. Okay, so the bag's completely together. What we've got to do now is this distance here from the stitch line to the edge of this material, we want to trim some of that off um, and then we'll sand it so it's nice and smooth and even. And then that way when we flip the bag, we don't have something sticking up inside the bag um, around those seams. So we just want to kind of trim that up. Again, there's probably other ways of doing this. Somebody out there that's a true bag maker probably knows exactly um, the proper way to do things. This is just how I figured out how I do them, um, how, how I figured out how I can do them where they work good. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this and then sand this down on our sander out there. And then um, y'all have seen us use that before, but I'll just sand that smooth and then we'll be ready to flip this bag inside out. So I'll show you how I go ahead and trim that. So one of the things that I'll do is I'll grab here and I'm gonna trim at an angle. Instead of trimming straight, I'm gonna trim at an angle. I do that because that's the way I do on like, uh, on like say a buckaroo roll on a saddle cantle, the straight up cantles. I'll do that as well. I'll, so I'll trim at an angle, pretty severe angle here so that I can see these stitches, but I know I'm away from these on this side. And then I'll flip it over and then trim again at an angle watching these stitches and then just sand off the the point basically or the hump that I leave in the middle. That ensures, because if you just think you're straight here, you may be cutting right near the stitches here, but you may be cutting them out on the back side. So it's just kind of a little trick for myself that helps me is just to come in here and, and trim here where I can see exactly where I'm going. I know I'm not affecting the stitches on the back end. And so I just trim that off. And then when I come over here, I'll do the same and hold it again at, the, at, a, at a pretty good angle. Then that gets my two, my two areas, the front and the back, where I want them. And basically I end up with a hump right here in the middle. And you can definitely do that by hand if you want and just match it. But it just helps to protect you from cutting through the stitches on one side or the other. So that's how I trim stuff like that. I'm just gonna sand it off, like I said, on the sander back there. But I'm gonna go ahead and trim the bulk of it off here. And I try to get fairly close to those stitches. Um, again, just kind of based on how I do stuff on saddles because when I'm doing a saddle welt, I don't want a big lump where that welt is. So I wanna trim as close to the stitches as I can or sand, at least sand to them where I can. And that way they lay as flat as possible against that tree. And these don't really have to lay against anything. They're just gonna be inside the bag, but I'd like them to be nice and smooth and flat as possible. Okay, so we've got the edges sanded. I sanded it all the way around there. Got really close to the stitches here. That's what you want. You don't want to sand the stitches off. I got one little spot there where I got kind of close. Just want to be real careful when you're doing that, when you're sanding this deal, or um, when you're trimming it, don't get into your stitches. But you want to get fairly close so that you don't have a lot of excess material. This bag is basically ready to be turned inside out now. And so that's what we're going to do. Every bag is different. Every material that you uh, flip right side out is different. Um, you're always, like we talked about at the beginning of the video, you're always gonna wanna try to pick a material that is fairly soft so that you can flip this thing fairly easily. If you pick something out that's fairly stiff, you're gonna have a lot more trouble trying to flip this inside or right side out. So, but this stuff's pretty soft. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and begin. Take your time, don't get in a hurry, don't get mad at it. Just try to work from a corner is what I usually try to do is start here in a corner and begin to push that towards the middle, maybe grabbing the gusset and pushing that in and just start beginning to kind of fold that all inside and begin to pull that through and flip there. Okay, so we got one side basically. I mean, you're gonna feel like you're just totally destroying the bag, but like I said, if your material's soft, you should be able to have this happen fairly easily. 
but just take your time. Don't try to force anything. Um, I mean, you got to force it, but don't, especially up here on these seams is where you want to be careful. You don't want to really stretch, try to stretch out because you're going to potentially tear some stitches loose. Just begin to walk it all. Up. There we go. Now, so it's right side out. Now what we gotta do is tease the gusset here, try to get everything where it wants to lay. It should lay pretty naturally. And when you're making bags, if you got the pattern designed correctly, everything should pretty well want to sit pretty nice. Um, without any trouble. I'm getting better and better at designing just kind of stuff like this because I've been doing it for, for you guys on the videos and so I've been pretty happy with my patterns here lately um, just as far as the way they they tend to actually work like they should instead of having to improvise along the way. Then you want to kind of squish your seam and just push you want to push out with your hand and kind of uh, kind of straighten up your seam, so to speak. So you're pushing that block of material out with your fingers and then just kind of pinching around there to get everything to lay correctly, to get that, that seam to lay nice and flat up in there. You can definitely make some type of wood block that you can stretch this over and kind of push down on it, flatten everything out. It'd be really nice to have some type of post, rounded post of some sort that's narrow. So you can put this on and then take a hammer and flatten out this seam really nicely all the way around. Um, that makes it really nice. That's what I do on swell covers, but they're bigger and more open. And so I can put them on the rock and hammer down inside on top of that weld and it really flattens this piping down and makes everything look really nice and even. That's the bag flipped inside out. And so what I'll use to do is I'll kind of fiddle with this seam for another, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, just kind of playing with it. I'll, I may find something in the shop that I can put in there and then kind of pat it down with a hammer and just try to get everything nice and even. If you sewed it, the, the, using that guide, sewing it helps a bunch to, to keep this piping straight because if you wobble when you're sewing and you're not sewing real straight at the same distance from this edge of the piping, you, sometimes you'll get a wiggle in your in your piping going around here and using that guide sewing it on to one panel first and then coming in and sewing it up um, using the guide it really helps to keep that piping nice and straight and uniform and um, so i think you'll really enjoy that if you've got a machine with a guide on it that you can do like we did here in the video i think you'll really enjoy how that goes together um, it looks really professional and like i said it's just another way of of kind of doing a bag that you're you don't see any kind of edging or any kind of seams on there. You just see your nice piping there. It's uh, just another another way of putting it together. So we'll go ahead and keep messing with this and then we'll get our strap ready to go and then we'll tie, uh, get our, uh, our tassel knots ready and we'll be ready to finish up this bag and, and get it ready to, to put out on the sales floor. So we've got our purse turned out and turned right side out we've got to wrap up this strap so the first thing i'm going to do is go ahead and stitch groove this and then uh sew it up on the machine so we can edge it and slick it we'll get all of that done and then the strap will be able to be ready to sew our tassel buttons on there and i'll show you that i'm just going to run through real quick uh sewing this up off camera i'm just going to sew it up just like a belt we'll edge it sand it slick it all of that stuff get it dyed and um and then punch our two holes you're going to need a pretty good size if you are going to use tassel buttons you're going to need a a pretty good size hole punch right here for that tassel to fit through um, it, you can find one of those at weaver or any kind of little um, tool supply or something like that try to find you a good size round punch uh, hole punch for that and um, and then we'll be ready to sew the tassels on so we'll get that done right quick 
So I've got my strap done, the purse strap. We've got it uh, sewn, edged, and slicked. Things ready to go. We punched our hole here. Like I said, depending on the size of the knots that you tie, if you're gonna use these tassel knots, that will decide on how big that hole needs to be. It's gotta be big enough that this knot can pass through it, but you want it tight enough so that the knot doesn't pop out of that deal because that's gonna be what's keeping the strap on the purse. So just kind of judge that hole size. I do have this hole size on the pattern. So if you buy the pattern, um, whatever hole size that shows you as far as the measurement, that is what size I'm using here. But it, like I said, depending on how big your lace is, whether you do three, four, six uh, strands, all that will determine how big that hole needs to be. So just use your judgment on that for the strap closure. But what we're gonna do is I've already tied all our knots. We do have a video that shows you how to tie these tassel knots. Um, so you can go back and watch that if you are wanting to try to tie some of these. For the strap, I did three strand knots. Um, do it a little bit wider. Uh, lace just so that the knot is a little stouter a little bigger and then for the closure as you'll see in a little bit We did use a uh, four strand on that one But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put these on there I've got a mark on the pattern where they need to be sewn But we're gonna go ahead and set these on the purse strap at our mark and then we're gonna sew these in place and I just hold them. You can definitely tack them down or glue them down, whatever you feel more comfortable with. I'm gonna just hold them with my hand and I'm just gonna sew them right where I want them. Just kind of be sure that you got them straight and got them where you want them. So we're not gonna sew very far, so I don't see a reason to waste the time gluing them in place, but. So that's one sewn on there. That's about all we're doing. Like I said, you can change your, your knot style. You could use a buckle there, change this little end up, however you wanna do the closure on these. I just, this kind of a little designer idea to me and just kind of something different. That's why we decided to do that. I don't know that it's the best functional way of doing them, but I think they look pretty cool. And so that's what we went with. And so basically the way this will work is you put these tassels through there, the strap, strap ends, and once it's on the D, then that'll pop through our hole here. And then that is what holds the, the tension of the weight of the bag will hold that knot in that hole. And that's how that strap attaches to the bag. And then you have this cool little knot and tassel hanging down. So that's our strap. We'll go ahead and get that put on the bag and we should be rounding that bag out. Okay, so we got our strap ready. We're ready to put on our third tassel. This will be the one in the closure. And as you notice, you might've noticed earlier in the video, I did forget to punch these bag punches. I said it in the video that we need to punch those before we sew our gusset in and everything after we glue it and sew it onto our body. Uh, that will be get a nice clean cut but I forgot and got through the bag and hadn't punched these holes yet. Not a huge deal on this particular bag, but you wanna kind of be careful on stuff like that. Be sure you do all your hole punch and everything before you assemble the item. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this big aluminum block and I'm just gonna set that inside the bag to where it's about where I need my holes. I do have the holes marked on the bag. Now I'm gonna take a couple pieces of heavy skirting leather, just put that on top of my, my aluminum block there. That's just to ensure I don't go through all that leather and uh, hit my block and mess up my tool. Now I'll take my half inch bag punch here and I will just go ahead and punch those holes. Like I said, small mistake can end up being a big problem on some types of bags and different things that you make if you don't get those things done early. On this particular bag, it's pretty open, so I was able to get something in there so we can punch those holes. But now we've got those in there. So now what we've got to do is put our closure knot on here. That's what we'll close, be able to close this bag with that larger hole of the flap. 
So what I did on this knot was I did a, I did this one four strands, so it makes the knot a little bit bigger. It's a little cleaner, but it also gives me one inch worth of width out of the material. So this knot was tied out of a, a strip of one inch leather. And so then I split it in half, so I've got two half inch pieces. Okay, so what I've done here is we've made some slits in this. I had a little trouble with the camera focusing, but I made a slit, our first slit for our blood knot. And then we go ahead and tie this first one and then go ahead and make your second slit. So you're basically completing the blood knot outside of the purse because you're not gonna be able to get a knife down inside the bag. So you wanna do that first so that you're ready to tie it. Then all you've really gotta do is get it in the bag and just tie your blood knot on the inside of the bag. And I'm not gonna be able to shoot that because there's not enough room in here, obviously. So we'll go ahead and get that tied up real quick. But you're just doing the blood knot, but you're doing it inside of the bag. just like that and then there's your knot and that keeps that flap closed now you can definitely make a bigger knot if you would like a bigger knot or a smaller hole depending on what you're going for you may do away with this completely and do a magnet or a snap or something like that for the closure but if you're gonna do the tassel knot you want to make sure that that knot is big enough that the flap doesn't pop off all the time where it's coming coming open all the time and then as far as our strap, do the same thing. Come around there, kind of tease that crease right there on that, on that strap. Just so it bends nice. So that's our little bag. All right guys, so that's our kidney bean purse. Um, like I said, I could have probably come up with a better name for it, but that's the shape that it is. So that's what we stuck with, but it went together pretty good. Um, I, I, my main deal with this video is again, wanted to show you how to do those side seams. We did a little reel about it a while back when I was trying to really dial it in and make sure that I could reproduce it and show it to you and, and, and something that where you can go ahead and do that in your shop and actually learn how to do these to where they're not as intimidating because I've, these have always scared me um, in the past because you can really screw up a lot of material real quickly if you don't have some kind of set way to really be sure that you're sewing where you need to be sewing when you're sewing these side seams um, or these, they call them side seams and boots, but um, of the, this piping or this welting here in the bag. But I think it makes a much nicer bag. I think it looks a lot more professional. Again, if you don't want to fool with any of this, you want to make some of these up fairly quickly um, and keep the cost down, you could definitely just sew all the pieces together without the piping in there, flip it inside out. I've done a couple of them that way, trying to get the patterns all dialed in and they look really nice and clean. So you could definitely do that. Again, you can change the way the closure is. You can change the way the strap attaches to the bag. The main thing is the shape of the bag, size of the bag, the patterns work. I think it gives you a lot of versatility. You can really take this pattern set and really make it your own. So there is a pattern pack available. There's a link down in the description if you wanna buy that. We have it in both digital as well as printed version. I suggest the printed version um, if you're in the United States uh, because we can ship you just, it, it's already printed out, it's in an envelope. Um, it's a big sheet of paper. So if you get the digital version, you will have to take that somewhere and have it printed. You will not be able to print that on your own computer or your own printer unless you're, uh, pretty high tech and you can figure out how to do all that. I do not know how to tell you how to do that. So I suggest if you can buy the printed version. If you're overseas or out of the country and you want the copy of the digital version, we can certainly uh, do that as well. You'll just have to take it somewhere and have it printed because I think the page is like three foot by four foot or something like that. It's a pretty good size sheet of paper like our other large format printed items, um, pattern packs and stuff. We are also offering a uh, material packs for these. We'll try to keep those in stock best we can with good body material that you can turn inside out as well as good quality Herman Oak leather that you can tool. Um, and I think it's gonna be pretty neat. Again, if you wanna know how to tie these tassel knots. We have a video on that. Just go back on our channel. You can find that. It's been a couple months ago or so, uh, depending on when you watch this video, but it was this year that we posted that. And I think they're pretty neat. I think it gives the bag a really neat look, but take this bag, make it your own, make a few of them. I think you'll have a lot of fun with them and we appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next project video.